Uh, we have right at 2,000 acres um, on 450 and the rest is rented ground. Um, we do uh, mostly alfalfa. We have between 12 and 1,300 acres of alfalfa and uh, we do some uh, winter wheat and corn and soybeans as rotation crops in so. between the alfalfa. I've been mostly no-tilling since I started farming my crop ground. We would always work the ground down before we seeded our alfalfa and only just in the last uh, five years we started no-tilling our alfalfa also so we're 100 percent no-till. There's a lot more no-till than there used to be around and that's a good thing and there's I mean we've really changed how we do things and that's really good for the future but you know some of this ground that gets worked every year I just I just think we're gonna starve to death one of these days if we don't do something different. We have very rolling ground, very erosive ground, and it seems like we have recently, the last five to ten years, a lot bigger rainfall events, it, it seems like, and um, just the erosion was the main thing, but I just got to deciding that we had, we had a perfect seed bed before we ever took the tillage tool to the field, and then we just messed it up, so we've had way better luck getting stands of alfalfa since we started no-tilling than we did before. I guess in looking at those soil tests, I could see that, yes, we're holding our soil fertility. We're doing good that way, but, you know, thinking raising alfalfa, we'd be raising our organic matter over the years, but we really weren't. And uh, after looking at that, we decided we should start using chicken litter as our phosphorus source. Um, one thing when you're raising alfalfa, you're hauling everything off the farm. For me, I have no livestock. I sell it all, so we're hauling everything off. And, and the chicken litter was a way to, to try to replace that somewhat. And then through these cover crop conferences and the no-till on the plains conference, I discovered that there's more links to that chain that we need to start. You know, we could bring cover crops in. The winter wheat really was a, was a big thing too. It, I could see that it really made a difference in our soil. And uh, some of these other things, you know, like after our, after our soybeans, we go to winter wheat, so we've got it covered. But any other ground is, just sits there bare over the winter, and, and uh, <clears throat> for soil health, you, you just can't have that. If you get right down to it, there's about three or four at least, because soil health has got to be right at the top of the list. Soil erosion goes right along with it. and uh, you know, keeping your ground covered uh, so there's something going to keep all the, the soil life going has is, is got to be your biggest priority. Weed control is another one. So, you know, I want all of them, I guess. <laughs> and definitely if you start having droughts and dry weather, which we saw last, like we saw last year, um, soil health is going to pay off big benefits in those years, definitely. Soil health is not something that happens overnight. It takes time. Um, so, you know, we've got to, it's going to take several years to get there, but I think we will eventually see. Obviously, when you start, the first thing, you, you takes a lot less time and it takes a lot less fuel, for one thing. Um, so we've decreased inputs there, but as far as fertility, I have not seen that yet, but I think implementing some of these cover crops, I think we'll definitely get there. Mm -hmm.